Hello everyone, Gerard here. This is the ninth episode of my Modular Diagonale mock project. Today I'll show you for the first time how the four buildings look together in studio. And I'll show you the latest design changes that I've made, a lot of them coming from your great feedback. If you want to see all the steps that got us here, you can check all the previous episodes, I'll leave a link to the playlist in the description. So, let's go into it. Here we have them, the four buildings all put together. I can tell you that it's quite a sight for me. It has been a long project. I've been with it for already nine months. It feels very nice to see all the buildings together here in studio. Of course, this looks almost like the original Diagonally set but you can see in the terraces a sense of a bit more depth and if you look here through the entrance of the Nocturne Alley you can see that there's something down there. In terms of changes I will show you right now the back of the Diagon Alley and you can see here I believe the biggest change and the biggest change is the pavement in the alley behind the buildings. And I understood that I was doing this wrong when I did the last building and the entrance to the Nocturne Alley because I was using the rugged pavement, but that is the road, it's not the alley. The alley has this dark tan pavement that is made of tiles, not that rugged. But what I needed to do is to add some details that give it some personality and that allow us to understand that this is a back alley not as taken care of as the front. And I did that in all the buildings and let me show you a bit the details that I put here in the several backs of the alley. So you can see I put some small rugged details. I added some little plants coming out of the ground even a frog here and I put under the stairs a pile of rubble and a snake coming out of that pile of rubble. I thought that it was interesting to add a few animals here in the back. In the second building I created some crack in the pavement, a bit of plants and some rubble and I added some crates here and a mouse. Oh, I forgot to mention that in the Ollivanders I also had like this plant coming out of the wall. On the third building, the Florian Blots and Ice Cream Parlor, I added also some plants, some rubble, and I added here some rubble under the stairs and a barrel that has like the remainings of the ice cream from the previous day in the ice cream parlor or something and that is dropped and the ice cream is melting to the pavement and we have a small kitten licking that ice cream and finally the last building has less pavement but i added some plants and some crack in the pavement anyway. So you see I tried to give some personality to the back of the buildings. In my opinion it, it is much better than it was before, but as always let me know what you think. Still on the outside there's just two more small changes and they were done in the last building. One was that I mentioned in the previous video that I was not happy with it. I removed these windows from the ground floor of Borkin and Burke and I added windows in the first floor with a bit of degradation here on the facade. And of course from the feedback from Bronster, and I hope I'm saying this correctly, in the last video he gave the feedback that the building in Borkin and Burke had no chimney but it had a fireplace. He also suggested that I added a fireplace and mantle in the upper floor 
and I did just that, but I will show you when I go back to showing the inside. But in the outside, you can see that I added two chimneys for the two fireplaces that I have inside the building. I gave them like this kind of look like in Ollivander's. I also redid the crows. They look much better now. I checked the design from the Viking ship and I copied it just like that and they look much better now. In terms of outside, basically, I think that's it. In terms of inside, I didn't do any change, I believe, in Ollivander's, but I added some changes in the Kirish store because I also had feedback from another of our viewers here, a Landrial Stern, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right, on the video about the quality Quidditch supplies and the Daily Profit. He suggested that I should improve the interior of the Quidditch store. And he was completely right. And I did exactly that. Let me just remove all these so we can see the interior of the Quidditch store. So I added some more cabinets with clothes. I increased the number of brooms in this. I put brooms on both sides in this display here. I improved a bit the store. I put the trunk above this cabinet for space. And I still have a few ideas. I may in the future still update a bit the interior of this store. I'm just struggling a bit to not make it too cramped. But yes, definitely this needed an upgrade. I already did some and I will keep doing so if I have other ideas. So that's it for the quality Quidditch supplies. Another building where I did a bunch of changes was on Flourish and Blocks and the Florian Force Q's ice cream parlor. Again, suggestion of a Landrial Stern. He suggested that in the Flourish and Blots I should extend the gallery to have access to the window and add more bookshelves and in the ice cream parlor to extend the counter and the shelving. In the um, Flourish and Blots I actually did exactly that. I extended this gallery on the first floor to go all around, to have access to the window and have additional bookshelves. I think it looks much better. Thank you so much, Alandriel, for the feedback. It was right on the spot. I was a bit afraid that it was too much, but actually it was spot on. I think it looks much, much better now. Also, in Florian Fortescue's ice cream parlor, in the first floor I added some furniture. I was not happy with uh, that big wall empty, so I managed to add here this cabinet without making it look too crampy, I think. I like how it looks. And in the ground floor, I extended the counter, but I didn't actually extend the shelving I added like a small cabinet that is a bit different. This shelving is like inside the wall. So I simply extended a bit here, like a, a prep area for the ice creams and some drawers. Hope you think this is an improvement. I believe so. And that was it in terms of changes for flourish and blots. I didn't do any changes in the Weasley's Wizard Wheezes, but in Borgin and Burke, I did some changes in the first floor. I added here a nice fireplace and mantle. I'm actually very happy about how this fireplace and mantle ended up looking. I had less space constraints that I had in the ground floor, so I could work a bit more with it. And 
For me, it looks great. I managed to fit it well in the wall. In terms of small builds, one of the things that I'm most proud of in this mock is this fireplace that I think looks really good. I think that's it. So this is the current state and I believe that from what I have seen already in the check of parts that are not included in the two diagonals and that I'm using, even in terms of colors of bricks that I'm using, I see that I have excess of some and I'm missing a lot some colors. It's very likely that some colors will change in the mock. Not that much, but one wall or other. I'm looking especially here at the back of Flourish and Blots. I'm using here a lot of dark green and the set actually doesn't have a lot of dark green. So I might think about changing the color of some of these walls. I have some excess of black and reddish brown. Both colors are used already in the building, so it wouldn't be that strange. Maybe I will change some of that. But in a nutshell, that's it. I hope you like the latest design changes. But it's still not completely closed yet. Now I need to optimize for the two diagonal sets that I have. During the design, I was mildly aware of colors and some special pieces that I could use for the design but I was not focused on the, this optimization. So now I have to worry about that. Currently the mock has a bit over 11,000 pieces and also the two diagonali sets are over a, bi a bit over 11,000 pieces. But there's still a, a gap of around 3,000 pieces. 3,000 pieces that are different in the mock and don't exist in the two sets and 3,000 pieces that will be a waste in the two sets that I won't use in the mock. Of course, this is not possible to be 100% aligned, of course, because I needed to change the way the buildings fit, because I added some interesting details. Of course, that won't be a, a, a possibility in terms of matching, but I wanted to I want to put it a bit closer. At least I want to reduce from these 3000 pieces to 2500 pieces. That's at least my goal. If I can go a bit further down, great. But at least that, so that at least I can take advantage of more than half of the 5500 pieces of the second diagonale set. So that is the next phase. That's what I'm currently working on and I will show you all about this process and explain exactly what I did uh, if you want to do that in your, uh, in your mocks and want to understand a bit the process. I will explain all that in my next video, the 10th episode of this project. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon.